name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with heart, blood, and circulatory ailments, starting with the letters T and B. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues with your skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, and then ailments specific to women and then specific to men. Then issues of the hormones and the metabolism, and after that I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system. Then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. Then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it is recognized that people react strongly to certain remedies, and as, as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mirror people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidi fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. And they also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings, and an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I have completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with heart, blood, and circulatory ailments beginning with the letters T and A, T and V. The valve is really two pumps, each composed of an upper and lower chamber, and two valves, one between the upper and lower chamber, and one at the exit from the lower chamber. The right side of the heart is the less muscular of the two pumps. It receives oxygen-depleted blood from the venous system and sends it to the lungs for oxygenation. The other half, the left side, receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs and sends it shooting up through the aorta and around the whole body. Branching off the aorta are arteries and arterioles. Their walls are muscular and elastic and are designed to transmit the pumping force of the heart to the farthest reaches of the body. Blood is collected from every part of the body by venules and veins, which are thin-walled and have valves in them, so that blood can flow one way only, back to the heart. The pumping action of muscles helps to push blood through them. Connecting the smallest tributaries of the arterial and venous system are the capillaries. 
These are blood vessels so small that in major organs and muscles there are thousands of them per square inch. Oxygen-carrying red blood cells are per pushed through them by the pulsing pressure of the heart. Blood pressure depends on three things, the tone of the artery walls, the pumping force of the blood, and the volume of blood in circulation. Generally speaking, blood pressure creeps up with age. This is because the kidneys become slightly less efficient at regulating the water content of the blood, and because arteries tend to become less elastic, forcing the heart to work harder. Blood is the body's universal transport system. It carries everything the body needs, oxygen, sugars, fats, proteins, hormones, minerals, clotting factors, antibodies, as well as everything it does not need, carbon dioxide, other dissolved gases, urea, hostile microorganisms and their toxins, as well as general debris. A grown man has about five liters of blood in him and about 8% of his body weight. Plasma, a straw-colored fluid that is mostly water, accounts for 55% of blood volume. Red and white blood cells and platelets make up the rest. Red cells carry oxygen bound to an iron-containing uh, pigment called hemoglobin, and the platelets prevent blood clots by initiating the clotting process. Far outnumber white blood cells, though during infection the latter multiply enormously. White blood cells are part of the immune system protecting the blood body against disease organisms. At the end of their useful life, which is seldom longer than three months even in the healthy of us, red and white blood cells are destroyed and recycled by the liver and spleen. Destruction must, of course, keep pace with, place, pace with creation. In a healthy individual, the bone marrow produces as many red blood cells as the spleen and liver destroy. The lymph glands, the glands that swell up during infections because they are busy producing a variety of white blood cells, are part of a secondary transport network, the lymphatic system. The spleen, tonsils, bone marrow, and thymus are also part of the lymphatic system, whose vessels run to every part of the body. Lymph vessels have much thinner walls than veins, but like veins, they have one-way valves in them and depend on the pumping action of muscles for their circulation. They transport lymphocytes to sites of injury and infection, collect demulsified fats from the small intestines, and drain fluid from the spaces between the cells. This fluid contains proteins and other valuable substances that cannot be actively absorbed by the blood vessels. The contents of the lymphatic network eventually empty into the bloodstream through two ducts, one on either side of the neck at the junction of the subclavian and internal jugular veins. Thrombophlebitis. Thrombophlebitis is an inflammation of a vein, usually due to an injury or infection. This roughening of the wall of the affected vein encourages the development of blood clots. This condition is most common in the superficial veins of the legs and in people who suffer from varicose veins. The symptoms are pain, redness, tenderness, itching, and hard swelling along the length of the affected vein. If the infection is present, the person may also have a fever. If this is the case, then see a doctor within 48 hours. The main risks are septicemia and fragmenting of the blood clots. Orthodox medicine offers antibiotics and compression bandaging. Homeopathic treatment is constitutional, aimed at increasing the resistance to infection and promoting natural reabsorption of blood clots. In the meantime, the following remedies will ease pain and promote healing. Specific remedies. To be taken four times daily for up to seven days. If the condition follows an injury, use Arnica 30C. After taking Arnica, if bruising and soreness persist, use Hamamelis 6C. For swollen veins with pain made worse by heat and letting the affected limb hang down, Use Pulsatilla 6C. If the skin has a purplish appearance, use Lachesis 6C. Self-help. Take moderate exercise and apply hot and cold compresses alternately. Zinc and a good multivitamin and mineral supplementation program are also recommended. Varicose veins. 
Varicose veins are a sign that valves in the affected veins are weak and unable to prevent a backflow of blood. The veins become lumpy and distended with blood, and smaller veins and capillaries show as twisted purplish lines on the skin. Poorly drained tissues may develop brown staining. This condition mainly affects the legs, but it can also affect the testicles, rectum, and anus. The legs tend to ache or swell and become tender and itchy. The valves may be naturally weak or become so as a result of prolonged sitting or standing. Deep vein thrombosis, constipation, obesity, or pregnancy complications include varic varicose ulcers and thrombophlebitis. Orthodox treatment is to strip or remove varicose, varicose sections of the veins or give injections to close them. The surrounding smaller veins rapidly enlarge to compensate. Support stockings are also prescribed. Homeopathy offers the following remedies. If there is no improvement within three weeks or if the condition becomes dramatically worse, see your doctor. For varicose veins that feel bruised and sore, and the person may also suffer from piles, use Hamamelis 30C. If warmth and allowing the legs to hang down make the varicose veins worse, especially during pregnancy and the person feels chilly, use Pulsatilla 30C. For legs that look very pale but redden easily and walk, walking slowly makes weak, achy feeling wear off, Use Ferrum 30C. For skin that is mottled and marbled, use Carbo Veg 30C. Self help. Sit with your feet raised above the hip level whenever you can and spend as little time standing as possible. Always wear support stockings. If a vein bursts and bleeds, apply a pad and bandage it on tightly and keep the leg raised until the bleeding stops. If it doesn't, see your doctor as soon as possible. Guard against constipation by eating more fiber and increase your intakes of vitamin E and C and bioflavonols. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.